So in this video, I'm going to show you how to use a text field as values field in a pivot table and show actual text values instead of showing count. So let me show you what I'm talking about. We have this data right here and we have salespeople that sell the product. They sell the product in different regions. And what I want to do, I want to be able to see which brands of products each person sells in which regions. So if I create a pivot table out of this by going under data and pivot table, I'm going to put that pivot table on a new worksheet. That's fine. This is going to show up. So in rows, I'm going to add salespeople and in columns, I want to add my region. So what I want to do in the middle here is list the brands that each person sells in that region. So if I take that and add it to values, the brand column, well, that's going to give me the count. So it tells me there are 13 sales that Amy Wood did in Midwestern. It doesn't tell us what brands those are. And if I open this functions list, see there is some count account. So it's always some sort of function. We can't just display the text values themselves. So that's what I want to do. I want to display the actual brand names coming from this column. You might think that you could just put this brand under rows right here. And if I do that, it will show me what brands, for example, Amy Wood sold. So Amy Wood sold these two brands, but I'm not going to know in which region those are. So we could technically go to values and also add branding values. And now wherever we have some numbers, we know that, for example, here, Amy Wood sold this brand in Midwestern 13 times and in North Eastern 18 times and uh, 67 times here. But this table gets very complicated to read like this. So it would be nice to just list the brands. That's pretty much what I'm trying to get here. So to get this down, what I'm going to do, I'm going to go here and remove, first of all, this brand from this. And I'm also going to remove brand from values to get back to where I started. So where I started was I listed sales reps in rows and regions in columns. So the way I'm going to do this, I'm going to add a values field and I'm going to do a calculated field. And as a calculated field, I'm going to create a formula. And what I'm going to do with my formula, I'm going to basically join the text values together by using join function. So I'm going to remove that zero, use the function join, open parentheses, and then the separator I want to use between those different brand names is going to be a comma. So that's going to be quote, comma, quote. And then we do a comma as a second argument in our join function. And the column I'm going to use to populate the values from is called brand, close parentheses. And what I need now is to also make sure that I summarize by custom. I don't want to sum them. So as I did this, you can see that I got this result. So for Amy Wood, see, we got this result and it says croc, 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 croc. So there is a lot of them because she sold this brand many times. So now we're taking each time she sold this brand and we're just basically joining that with a comma and we have this very long field. But if I Hopefully look on top here, see it's all the same brand apparently in Midwestern. Now, if I look at this one, see it goes Jessica Simpson for a while. And at some point, see there is also Crocs here mixed up in the middle of that. So there are multiple brands, but I don't want this messy stuff. I need just the brand to be listed once. So to get that done, I'm going to go inside of this calculated field and use unique function right there around brand hit enter. And there it is. So we have our text as a values field. So now if I make this bigger a little bit, I'm going to close this to get this out of the way. 
and zoom out probably a little bit to make this more readable. And uh, one of the other things that are not necessary here because these are not numbers, having this grand total column, I guess doesn't make a lot of sense unless you wanted to have a total column of all the brands that person sold. I don't really care about those, so I'm gonna remove those. So I'm gonna click here and get rid of this show totals for rows and show totals for columns. And the rest to make this just look a little prettier, I'm just gonna select this and add some borders to this. And then if we just expand this column so we can see the values in each column, didn't work with auto expanding, so we'll just do it manually, that's fine. We should have our list, so there it is. So now we can easily look here and see, for example, Amy Wood in Midwestern sold this brand. In Northeastern, she sold these two brands. And then, for example, this person on line six, they sell Nike and Adidas in this and this regions, and so on. So we have the list. And that's how we can use text field as a value field. Now, one thing you may want to change is this name of this field. See, it says calculated field one. So to change the name, see, it shows up right here in the top left corner. I'm just gonna type something right over it. So I'll just call this brands sold. Hit enter, that renames here, that renames here. And there is our pivot table. So another way to get the same thing done is by using functions instead of using a pivot table. Let me show you an example of that. I'm gonna add a new worksheet. I'm gonna call this one functions pivot. So first what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna get this list of unique reps and unique regions on top. So to do that, I'm gonna go here and start with equals unique function. And as a range, I'm gonna go to that subtotal worksheet and I want a unique list out of this uh, sales rep. So I'm gonna start selecting here. I'm gonna just leave it halfway like this. I'm gonna remove this end reference 10 out of this. So I'm gonna go from C2 through C, close parentheses and hit enter. That should give me a nice clean list of sales reps. I'm gonna do the same thing with my regions. So I'm gonna go here and do equals region, uh, actually not region, but unique. And then we need the range of regions. So I'm gonna go to subtotal tab, again, find the region columns, start from the second row, scroll down a little bit and remove the end row reference, which is 12, close parentheses, hit enter that gives me a nice unique list. Now this list should have been in columns like this, not in rows like this. So to make that happen, I'm simply gonna go back to this function and put that inside of a function called transpose, which will basically just shift our columns to rows and rows to columns, in this case, rows to columns. So I'm gonna hit enter, and now we have the list here. So that gets us the list of reps and the list of regions. Now we need the actual values here in the middle. And we can do that using filter function. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do equals filter. And in this function, we need to select the range to be displayed. So the range of values I need to display are coming from this column of brands. So I'm gonna select a little bit like this and again, remove the end reference, so it goes all the way down, comma, then we need the condition one. So the condition one is gonna be one of the columns we're filtering by. So one of those columns I'm filtering by is gonna be sales rep field. So sales rep is this thing right here. It's very hard for me not to select it, but that starts from this C2 and down. So I'm gonna just select something here and go correct this. This should have been C2, starting from the second row, similar to how this other column starts here on the left, and then end reference should be removed. 
So in this range, I want to make it equal to, so I only want to select the ones that match the current sales rep. So I'm gonna go back to this tab for functions, pivot and click on the current sales reps name. So that should filter to just that sales rep and then I'm gonna do a comma. I also need to filter to that current region. So to do that, I'm gonna to go to my subtotal tab again, select the column of regions, again, starting from the second row and down, remove the end row reference to make this more dynamic, make it equal to, and go back to my final summary worksheet. And I need to click on this region that's on top and this thing right here is covering that. So that should be B1 right there. So I'm just gonna type B1, which is that cell right on top. Close parentheses and hit enter. So that was B1, that was this one that says Midwestern, and this is A2, which is the sales rep. So this gives me this list. Now, remember, this gives me all the occurrences. I just want to get a nice, unique list. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take this and put that inside of a function called unique again, and that should clean that list nicely. So I'm gonna hit enter. Now those are just the two brands that that person is selling in that region. Now I don't want those to appear in this two rows separately like that. It needs to be just appearing in this one row by itself. So I'm gonna take this whole thing and I'm going to put that inside of the function join. So the function join is going to accept the delimiter. The delimiter is gonna be again a comma or whatever you want in quotations, comma to move on to the second argument. And my second argument is gonna be this entire function that I've built before. I'm gonna close parentheses in the end to close that join function and hit enter. And that will transform that to a single line thing that gives me Nike and Adidas. So now we just have to do some creative correct locking to make sure we can drag this right and down so it works for everybody else. So to get that done, I need to make sure first I lock all the ranges. So the ranges I have here is this one first. So I'm gonna highlight that and press F4. Then I have the second one that's right here. I'm gonna highlight that, press F4. I have this third one, highlight this one as well, press F4. So all the ranges are locked now. And the other two cells I need to take care of is this A2 and B1. So with A2, that's this cell that gives us the name of the sales wrap. So all the wraps here on the left are in column A. So I'm gonna go ahead and add a dollar sign for that column A to lock the column right in front of that letter A. And similarly for B1, the list of regions, all the regions appear in row one. So I'm gonna go ahead and lock that one and leave the B open like this. Enter, that should give me this. So now I should be able to just take this, drag right and drag down and that almost works. So it works for cases when we have actually some results, but when we don't have results, we get this NA error. So if this person didn't sell anything for this region, we get an NA, we don't get a nice list. So this is that Amy Wood thing, see, we were getting in our pivot table that was selling uh, this brand here and these two brands in this other region. But anyways, now let's get rid of those NAs. So to do that, I'm gonna take that first function that I had here and put it inside of a function if error. Like this, open parentheses and go in the end and close parentheses, just like that. So take that and just drag it all over again. Go right, didn't do very good job at that. Let me try that one more time, drag it to the right. And you know what, I'm just gonna drag it down first. I'm gonna drag it down and drag it right. So now we can just auto fit this columns and that should be our nice clean list. So if you want to make this pretty, you can do your borders and colors, whatever you want to do. But really this is what we wanted to happen and it happened. 
Now, one other thing I want to mention, sometimes you might want these names sorted in alphabetical order. And you can do that by simply just taking this unique function and just place it inside of a function sort like this. I'm gonna close parentheses, hit enter, and that should just sort this list alphabetically. You could also sort this alphabetically, the list of regions if you wanted to, by doing exactly the same thing, just simply doing sort. I'll probably do that sort before I transpose. So sort and close parentheses here, hit enter. That should apparently that was sorted. I don't see any difference. So that's now sorted here, sorted there, and that just works. Maybe we'll just clear this right here to make it look nice, but there you go. So that's how we can pivot text values and display them as text. And that should do it for this video. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.